Hi guys, it's Misty. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm here again this week to share my design team project with you for this week's Simon Says Stamp Wednesday Challenge. Our challenge is autumn or fall colors and we are showcasing products from Honey Bee Stamps. This card was very easy to make using these beautiful products from Honey Bee Stamps, the fall stamp and die set. I really like this fall die because it has three layers to it instead of the normal two. And the third layer is kind of like a, it's not a stitched border, but it's like a, a pierced border. It's just like a bunch of little dots. It's, it's really cool looking. So I'm starting out on some Bristol Smooth cardstock and I'm gonna ink blend ripe persimmon, carved pumpkin, and squeezed lemonade. And I really wish I had more brushes of this particular size that I'm using here because it's perfect for ink blending on word dies like this. The other brushes were a little too big, so um, I struggled a little bit, but I found that tapping the color on, I did that on the bottom color, it really helped make the color nice and bright. So that was helpful. But I'm gonna have to look into seeing if I can get just this size brush that I'm using right here. I don't know if you can buy them individual like that, but I'm hoping you can because I would love to get a couple of those size just for ink blending on word dies. I'm using a pattern paper that unfortunately is not available anymore. This is by Lawn Fawn. Uh, it was like a fall pattern paper. I think it was one of the perfect, perfectly plaid, I think is what it was called, but uh, there's there's all kinds of plaid papers out there nowadays. So when I was coming up with an idea for this theme, I the only thing I knew is I wanted to use orange, yellow, and teal together. I really like those colors together, especially for uh, fall colors. And so that's that's what I started with and then worked everything else around that. I found this dark wood pattern paper in my paper stash and I loved it. I thought it went perfectly with this. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it out of the center so that way I can still use this as a background if I want to. And I definitely do because I, I want to, I want to use this paper. But I also cut it out of black cardstock because I was trying to decide which one I liked better. And I really liked it on black. It really made it pop, but it wasn't, it wasn't a fall color. And I was, I was going for fall color. So I went back and forth between these two for a while and then I finally settled on the, the dark brown wood pattern paper. Well, actually I didn't settle. I paused the camera and went and asked my hubby what he thought, which one he liked best. And then I settled on the dark wood. I wasn't sure if I was gonna use these small stitched leaves by Lawn Fawn. So I just decided to cut them out and color them up and see if I could make them work. And I'm using all different kinds of colors for these. So uh, instead of listing them on screen, since I'm not going to color them all in this video, I'll have them all listed over on my blog. Now these brushes were nice for little areas like this. They don't hold much color, so you see me going back to the ink quite often, but you know, it's, it, they're perfect for little, little images like this. And I was just going over it with as many colors as I wanted to and then uh, to finish it off I'm going around the edges with some ground espresso. I thought it just kind of made, made, made the edges pop a little bit more and there's no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I'm just kind of just coloring <laughs> and hoping they turned out. They look really pretty when they're all done like that together. Now this pattern paper was also part of the Lawn Fawn paper pack that's no longer available. And it had the same color, so I thought it was perfect for this card. I'm using the Nuvo Smooth Precision glue pen for my word die here. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue that to the teal pattern paper. I used the postage stamp die by Avery L to cut out my frame there. And that's, it's a wood grain craft cardstock. And I didn't know, I, I couldn't decide whether I wanted to use the frame or the inside part there and just have the plaid paper as, as the background. But so I think I'm going to make another one of these cards using that other piece because it looks really good on just a, just a simple card on the craft card stock too. And I was really excited to use the rounded alphabet by Simon Says Stamp. I've had that for a little bit and I haven't used it yet, so... That's what I used for the y'all part of the sentiment. 
And the happy is part of the fall stamp set. And I'm using my sentiment label die to cut it out. Couldn't decide how much space to leave on both sides, so I, I'm going to leave extra space so I can trim it down. Which I knew I pretty much wouldn't just the word. But, you know, I like to leave my options open so I don't have to redo things if I don't have to. But then I just took it right to my paper trimmer and trimmed it down anyway, so I guess that was kind of a wasted step. But that's okay. At least then I knew that I had the extra space if I needed it, and I didn't, so I trimmed it off. But I didn't want to stamp the happy and the... the um, it has y'all in the stamp set too, but I thought it looked kind of weird with happy on a piece of white cardstock and the y'all stamped out on a different piece of paper too. So I thought the, alf the rounded alphabet die was perfect to do that. The y'all part of my sentiment here. And as you can tell, I could not decide how I wanted to place these leaves. I it felt like I tried every different way and I just, I don't know. I wasn't totally happy with any way, really. So I just kept taking pictures. For some reason, that helps me if I have a couple different options and I can't decide, then I'll take pictures of the different options and kind of look at them a, a little bit differently. I don't know how that helps or why it helps, but it does. So if you can't decide, maybe try taking pictures of your different options and see if that helps. There's my tidbit for the day. Uh, these leaves have like a score line down the center. It's not a score line, but it was kind of like a stitch line. And so I just took a, a little score there and scored it down the center so I could give the leaves a little dimension, kind of fold it, fold it in half a little bit, make it look like a real leaf. And then I, I, I liked them up in the corner and I thought maybe have the top one popped up a little bit would be cute, but I don't know. When I was looking at it from from my viewpoint, I just wasn't liking it. It seemed like it was too clustered up there. So instead, I am going to go with this falling leaves look. If you're wondering why there's just random leaves glued on my card, that's what I was going for. I was trying to make it look like falling leaves. Yeah, whatever. I, I think it looked better up in the corner now, but they're already glued in place. So next time. And the y'all part of my sentiment, I used that same really pretty dark wood uh, pattern paper. But again, you can't really tell. That's the problem with using it on these small spaces is you can't see how pretty that paper is. Uh, but anyway, so I used that for the top layer of, of my sentiment. And then I just used some brown uh, cardstock scraps that I had to cut it out three more times. So it's four layers total. I'm realizing now I probably could have just used like a chocolate brown cardstock for the fall and the all and saved my beautiful dark wood pattern paper. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's all in the details, right? So if you, I mean, you can tell it's the wood, wood grain cardstock if you look at it up close, but kind of from afar, it just looks like chocolate brown cardstock. But you live and you learn. So I'm just using my Tim Holtz ruler here to make sure I line this up properly. I tell you though, adding a couple layers to the y'all part, that made a huge difference. So maybe, maybe the pattern paper didn't make much of a difference, but adding uh, four layers total definitely made a difference. I think it looks really cool with it kind of popped up like that. I've got to use that rounded alphabet die more often by Simon Says Stamp. It's just the perfect size letters. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and commit to my dark brown um, shadow layer there. I don't know. I don't know why I didn't glue it when I glued the other two layers together, but maybe I thought I was going to change my mind at the last minute, which is happened before. So anyway, I'm making the commitment to the, the dark brown wood grain pattern paper. And then I'm just going to glue everything together. 
thought this was a fun die. I did use the Lawn Fawn stitch rectangle on the plaid pattern paper, but as you can see, this is going right over the top of it, so that was kind of a wasted step. But at that point, I didn't know what I was going to do, so. I'm using my Gina K Connect Glue to glue the rest of the parts in place. And I used the Nouveau Smooth Precision Glue Pen to glue not only the y'all letters together, but to glue it on my card front too. You know, I almost didn't do a video this week for this card because some will look at this and know exactly what I did to make this card. But I also thought back to when I started making cards and if you're not, a seasoned card maker or you're just starting out card making you might look at this and not know what I did so I was kind of torn this week whether to do a video or not but I figured there's people out there that are just starting out at card making or you know or just enjoy watching videos like this so that's kind of ultimately what made me go ahead and go through with this video but it is a pretty easy card to recreate and I hope there are are new card makers out there that you know find some useful tidbits in this video i really i mean i figure i'm making the card anyway so why not turn on the camera and record it and share it with other people and like i've said before i actually enjoy editing the video so in case anybody was wondering why i share some of the videos i do that would be my answer because it certainly isn't it isn't to make money on YouTube. So that, that doesn't happen. <laughs> All right, I decided to go over the whole word with the Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pen. And it just gave it a really pretty sparkle. I, I honestly don't know what I would do without these glitter pens. They just add such a beautiful element to cards. And it's hard to photograph and it's hard to see in videos too. But I mean, I can I can just sit here and you know, turn my card this way and that way and watch the sparkle and be perfectly content. <laughs> Is that a weird thing to say? I don't know. I just love, I just love sparkle on cards. Okay, I'm going to add this to a side folding card base. My card base is the Nina 110 pound cardstock. And then I'm going to show you, I'm going to try to show you how sparkly it is. I think I get a good angle. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. And then just because I had so many of those leaves left over, I'm going to go ahead and glue one on the inside of my card. Reminds me of the maple tree I have out back. And that is my card for this week. So thank you guys so much for wa watching, even if it is a very simple card that you don't necessarily need a video to watch. Uh, I do appreciate you taking the time with me today. All of the supplies that I used will be listed and linked in the video description below and also on my blog. I'll have additional pictures over there if you want to see more pictures and how to join our uh, Simon Says Stamp Wednesday Challenge. And if you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel. You can let me know whether you like this video by clicking on the like button or if you didn't, click on the dislike button. That's fine too. So I will see you guys next week. Thanks. Bye.